So what you need to know about these unit circle questions is that first, they look like this on the SAT. If you see something like that, it's a unit circle question. The problem is that these questions were never ever tested on the SAT prior to 2020, and none of these SAT prep books out there are covering this topic. And as a result, everybody got this question wrong. Everybody got a lower score, despite this question being very, very simple. So what I did is I told my students exactly what you need to know for these types of unit circle questions, and they have never missed a question like this since. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I told them. So this is the very first thing you need to know about these unit circle questions. So first of all, unit circle questions look like this on the SAT. What's the value of cosine of 60? And what's the value of sine of 5 pi over 4? Sometimes you're going to have a measure in degrees inside the parentheses or in radians with a pi inside the parentheses. And what most en students end up doing here is that, okay, sine, uh, sine cosine tangent, that's gotta be a SOCA TOA. So they try to draw a right triangle with 60 in here and say, okay, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse, that'll be the answer, but that doesn't give them the answer because we don't know what these side lengths are. So they end up guessing, getting the question wrong. So in general, it is true that whenever you see a sine, cosine, or tangent on the SAT, it's either going to be SOCA TOA or going to be complementary rule. And if you don't know what these two things are, going to have a video linked up right here for trigonometry. You can watch this afterwards. But here's the third and new type that's been included on the SAT, and that's finding the value of cosine of an angle or cosine of a radian. And the only thing you need to know to solve these types of questions is this right here. Number two, what do you need to know about unit circles for the SAT? Well, the sign of an angle is referring to the y coordinate at that specific angle, and cosine is referring to the x coordinate at that specific angle. What does that really mean, right? Well, the thing is, there's this thing called unit circle, okay? This is what the unit circle looks like. And at every single angle, whether it be 30 degrees, 45, or 60 degrees, there is going to be a coordinate. There's going to be a X coordinate and there's going to be a Y coordinate. So for example, let's say you are asked to find out what sine of 30 degrees is equal to, right? So how you interpret this is sine is referring to the Y value and Y value at 30 degrees. The question is asking you to find out what the Y value is at 30 degrees. So what's the Y value at 30 degrees? Well, 30 degrees is right here. We go to the coordinates and we find out what the Y coordinate is. It's going to be one half, right? So sine of 30 is going to be one half, okay? Another example, if it's asking for cosine of let's say 45, or let's make it harder, cosine of 135, right? What's cosine of 135? How do we interpret this? It's just asking you to find out what is the X value when your angle is 135 degrees. So we simply go to 135 degrees, go to the coordinates right here and find out what the X coordinate is. So what is the X coordinate going to be? It's going to be negative root two over two. That's going to be your answer. Does that make sense, guys? So going back to the original questions like you would see on the SAT, if the question is asking you to find out what is the value of cosine of 60, right? What's the value of cosine of 60? Well, how do we interpret this? It's asking us to find out what the X coordinate is at 60 degrees. So let's go to the 60 degrees right here. 60 degrees right there. What's the X coordinate? It's going to be one half. So our answer is going to be one half choice B. Does that make sense? So the key concept behind solving these questions is just this right here. Sine is referring to the Y value. Cosine is referring to the X value at certain angles. Okay. And another variation of these types of questions is right here. Instead of giving you the angle, instead of having like 30 degrees or 45 degrees or whatever in there, these are in degrees, right? But another way to represent an angle is known as radians, okay? Radians are a measure of degree in measure of angle with a pi in it. It might seem complicated, but it works the same way too. So sine of five pi over four, right? How do we find sine of five pi over four? It's asking us to find out what the Y value is when the angle is five pi over four radians. So going into our unit circle chart right here, five pi over four is going to be right here. What's the Y value is negative root two over two, which means our answer is going to be choice B right there. Does that make sense? So these unit circle questions are essentially testing your ability to identify or recall what the X coordinate or Y coordinate is for 
certain given angle. That's why these questions are either you know it or you don't, because if you can read sine of five pi over four and recognize that you're looking for Y value at five pi over four, then you're going to be able to get the answer. But another problem is the college board will not give you the unit circle on the SAT, which means they are essentially asking you to memorize the unit circle chart. So what I told my students is that, Hey guys, I know this is a lot of things to memorize, but if you want to get more questions, right. And get a high score on the SAT, you're just going to have to memorize this. And people might see this and say, John, that's a lot of things to memorize. How am I going to memorize all this? Well, good news is that there's actually a little trick, little pattern to memorizing this. So if you look at this angle right here, pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, seven pi over four, all the ones in red, right? With the four at the bottom, they essentially follow a same pattern of X, Y coordinates. Root two over two, root two over two, root two over two, root two over two. The only thing that is different is the sign on the X and Y coordinates, right? So for example, it's going to be both positive and positive here. It's going to be negative X and positive Y here. It's going to be negative, negative here, and then positive and negative here, right? The sign is the only difference. The X and Y coordinates stay the same. Only the signs are different depending on where these things are located. So if you use that to your advantage and memorize it using the patterns, you're going to be able to memorize them within two, three days. And down below, I'm going to give you guys a link to the unit circle and a sheet to practice with so that you can prepare yourselves and be ready for the SAT. And whenever you're memorizing them, it's best if you can recall these things in like five seconds, but as long as you can recall what these things are within 10 seconds, I think that's good enough for the SAT. So for example, if I ask you what is sine of pi over three, and you can say it's root three over two in a matter of 10 seconds, that's good enough for the SAT. It's more of accuracy than speed when it comes to these types of questions. And everything I've talked about in this video, I have summarized it into a three page worksheet, which I'm going to link it down below in the description box. You can download it, read it, practice with it, and you will never miss these unit circle questions ever again on the SAT. So if you want to get every single one of these unit circle questions, right? All you have to do is just memorize the unit circle to the point where you can recall it within 10 seconds and know how to understand and interpret what cosine of angle or sine of an angle is. If you can do that, you'll never miss a question and you'll get a higher score on your next SAT. So if you guys found this video helpful, give the thumbs up. And if you guys want to score high on the math section and reach your target score, subscribe to the channel. That's going to be it. I'll see you on the next one.